Hello, good day and welcome to Learn and Flutter. And in this video, we are still talking about material design and specifically, we're going to look at the bottom app bar and floating action button. And just to jog your memory a little bit, just remember we're, we're talking about the scaffold widget. And we said so the scaffold widget has these basic three parts, the top, body, and the bottom. And we looked at how that basically give you a good starting point for designing a screen or a page, whatever you want to call it. And previously, we talked about the app bar in a previous video, but today I want to focus on the bottom app bar, and then we're going to see how we can also put floating action button down at the bottom. Now, before we get started, if you like what you're seeing, hit the like button. That helps with getting other people to find and enjoy the same material you are. And if you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe and also hit the notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos. All right, let's jump in. So, okay, so there's the documentation for scaffold class and you can always check it out. Uh, we've been over some of it before, but I'm gonna jump to my command line and start up, you know, create a directory for our application. Now, if you look where we, are, where we have, we have three previous um, examples or parts in section five here. So I'm gonna make a copy of our example three and then I'll start my Visual Studio code in that directory. And so as usual, we're gonna start here in the main, that Dart. And just a quick review, um, this is our entry point, this is our main function, and it says this has this one statement that's gonna run app, and that's from Material um, Library, and we give it a an object, which is a widget that represents our application. There's a stateless widget, that returns a material app and that governs a lot of things about our application behave and we discussed that a little bit and we're going to see more of it later but what we have is this property that is a home call a home property and it's a widget and this represents you could think of it as the initial page for our application so our home page is a stateless widget that returns a scaffold widget and like i said before the scaffold widget is basically the app bar, the body, and this bottom navigation. And in our previous video, we talked a lot about the app bar. The body wasn't anything exciting. You can put whatever you want there. And so today we're going to look back at this bottom app bar, which we um, coded up before in our very first example. And we just put some text there that says footer and align it to center. So let's run our code and Make sure that we, we can see what this look like before we make any changes. And this is picking up literally from where we left off in the previous video. All right, so our application is up. Now that we have this running, we can see that our, our footer, there's the text, and we can see that um, because this is a color we've we selected, purple and so on, that's reflected here in the bottom navigation. So remember that since this bottom navigation has a child, that is a widget, you can sort of make it anything you want. So if you want to put several things at the bottom, you can probably use like a row widget and you know just put other things down at the bottom. But today, like I said, I want to talk about not only the bottom navigation bar, but also floating navigation button. So what I'm gonna do is start off by commenting this out. Let's get rid of this and I'm gonna open this to make sure that I don't make a mistake in where I'm placing things. I can see our bottom navigation went away. And so let's add a floating action button. And so a floating action button, the property of it, it's a type, it's a widget, um, but there's also, you see, and it's typically a floating action button, the object. So this is the property name, but this is typically a floating action button. So let's make it a floating action button. And so we'll put that there. And if we look at how our screen is updated, you can see that how a button appear here by default, it's a rounded button. Now, if we go in here and we look at some of the properties that are available to us, um, of course, since it's a button, we have on press. And so we can do something like, and so if we click this, we're gonna see that how um, we can register those respond to those that event the unpress event but there are some other things that we can do um for example they have tool tip and so this is a string and so we can say for example 
and if we let that update and we go back to our application and, and you hold on on this you can see the tooltip the floating action button um appears at the bottom of your scaffolded um, widget in the place of your bottom navigation in this case you can see we remove the bottom navigation and so we can put this back if we like and we can see what will happen and if we put back our bottom app bar you can see this floating button floats above our app bar and so you can use both if you like typically the way i've seen this used is a floating action button to help you perform some sort of operation on the page you're on so for example if you're listing users or product this might be a plus button to add a product on this page but it doesn't really use for navigation um the bottom nav bar is yes where you're going to want to put those buttons for navigation now um, since this is just a button and so one of the things we can do is say that oh, we want to use an icon for this and so we can use the child field and since this takes a child we can make that child which is a widget itself anything but we can use an icon and so for icon we use icons.data and we can make it anything you know like we can do plus for example or add i think is what we might want to do i say add photo for example and so that icon would show up here and there it is there's only one other thing i want to show you that relates to these two things being used together and that is your bottom navigation and your floating action button and that is the floating action button location and so there's a property for that called floating action button location and this tool is governed by its own class and you can see it's responsible for determining where the floating floating action button should go if now the scaffold state will use the default location but then you can which is floating action button that end float um, so we can get that class and so here we go and so these are some of the locations and you can see end float is the default but we can also do like end dock and if you're guessing what that's gonna do here it is it docks it it puts it within it let it falls down within that um bottom navigation and so you can see it's still floating above the bottom nav but it's sort of um lowered and there's some other interesting things you can do also we can go to the bottom navigation and say the shape of you know take out a notch so we can basically um put a notch in this bottom nav and give it a shape that would allow it to look like if our button actually cuts into the bottom navigation now this might not make sense until you see it so let's do shape and then let's do um circular notch rectangle and just something like that and let's update and there you see that is what it looks like and if you were to move this somewhere else so for example instead of end if you move it to uh center dock for example this is what would happen and you can see wherever you move the floating action button if you put a notch shape in your bottom nav well then you notch out or you cut out that shape in the bottom nav now notice we had text in the bottom but maybe we don't want text there or if we still want text there well we can use something like a container to change the height of our bottom navigation so for example for my bottom navigation since it has a child i'm going to wrap this child um this child in a let's wrap it in a container so i'll do so no it's not that wrap it in a container for example and since my child is wrapping a container i can give my container a height and let's just say i want to use 50 relative pixel then now you can see i can increase the height of my container of course if i still want to see text now 
I have to arrange to make sure that all my test is not centered. Well, it could be centered horizontally, but of course I'll have to move it to the bottom. And we have ways of doing that, right? We can wrap this now in a column widget and then change the alignment and so on, major access alignment. So we have, there are a number of things that we can do, but if you don't need any text there, just remove the child completely. And so you have something like this and you don't have to worry about it. But you see all the ways in which you can combine, or at least you can imagine some of the ways you can combine having a float to the action button and the bottom navigation and whether or not you want it to be notched or not. All right, so I hope that you learned something. Definitely consult the documentation if you want to see some of the other properties, but I would say just try playing around with them. Worst case is you're going to break your application, but that's okay because you're still building it, so that's okay. And then you'll learn and you'll remember what you did wrong that didn't work. Take care. Bye. Have a great rest of the day.